The Buy Rail 2 tool is the next step up from Buy Rail 1 in that it allows for you to use two separate profile curves and two rails in between them in order to create a surface. Very, uh, very handy tool. Actually, I use this quite a lot more than Buy Rail 1. And uh, let's give a quick example. I'll start off by creating my first profile curve. Uh, let's just say here in the side view, I'll grab my CV curve tool and create one profile. Now I'll create another profile with a different shape, say something that sort of comes up and over and then back down like so. Now let's separate these out from one another. And now what I need to do is connect these two profiles with rails. Now one of the easiest ways that I know, if you, if you know you need to connect two uh, profiles with rails, is just to grab your EP curve tool. You can snap each EP curve right here to your rails. Now, of course, this is going to give you a nice straight line, which you can either go in and grab CVs and change the shape of if you want, or if you find out that you need more detail, of course, it's, uh, it's not much of a problem to come in here and go to Edit Curves, uh, Rebuild Curves. Make sure you keep ends, and we'll increase the spans up to four. Set these to uniform. And now if we go to Control Vertices on these, we have a lot more detail to sort of play around with. So we can kind of dome this up, and this one will do something just a little bit similar, but we'll pull this inner part out. So you're going to have a little bit of fun with the shape of these guys. And now let's go ahead and give the, the tool a try. We'll go to Surfaces, By Rail, By Rail 2 tool. And it says, uh, please select two profile curves. No problem. One, two. Now select two rail curves. One, two, and we get a surface, just like that. So you can see how we've swept along the, the uh, two rails, and we have blended from the shape of the original curve into the shape of the second. And you can, of course, go back in because of construction history and make changes to your curves, and that'll affect your surface. So you can have a lot of fun here, and you can see how it blends over. Now, under your node, you're going to find the blend factor, and this will control where that blend takes place. If we were to open up the By Rail 2 tool options, you'll see this as well, profile blend value, which you can adjust. It's a 0.5 by default, meaning that you get a nice even blend across your surface. If I were to take this and adjust it after the fact in the node, notice how it controls where that blend takes place. At a blend factor of 1, we actually run the original profile right up to the second one, and it sweeps up at the very end. Or we can set this over to zero, and we, can't, we keep the uh, shape of the second profile all the way back to the first. So you can adjust this and find a nice happy medium where you'd like that blend to go. We have uh, transform mode, proportional or non-proportional, which of course will control the height of your curve, basically whether or not it's uniformly scaled as the, uh, as the two rails space out from one another. So you can have a lot of fun controlling the shape that way. So you have a lot of control here that you can uh, play with and get a variety of different options. You also have tangent continuity for profile 1 and 2, meaning that if instead of using a profile curve, you are actually just using a, uh, a surface isoparm, you can control whether or not you're maintaining tangency. Let's go ahead and give a demonstration of that. Let's see, I could uh, grab a plane, and let's make this a 3x3 three three plane, and I'll scale it up just a little bit. Let's go over to Control Vertices, and let's see, I'll grab all the CVs in the plane like so. We'll pull them up. We'll pull these up a little bit, and I'll grab these guys and scale these in and scale these out. So this really sort of interesting looking surface. Now, what I'm going to do is just duplicate this surface. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, that I need to make a surface that connects the two of these. Now, your first response might be, well, why don't you just loft? And depending on your situation, you may be able to go ahead and loft. But what if you need more power? Maybe instead of uh, just these two surfaces simply connecting right here in the middle, maybe instead uh, they have to sort of bend a little bit before they get from one side to the other. So this is where by rail is going to come in really handy. So now I can grab, let's just say the EP curve tool. And I'll go ahead and create a curve that just connects straight over and a curve that connects straight over, like so. And of course, we can edit that curve. So this is kind of, in a way, it's behaving sort of like a loft with privileges because we can control the direction that everything is going, like so. And uh, actually, before I do this, let's go ahead and rebuild these curves. Not that I want to be too picky or anything. Let's go ahead and use whatever settings we were using last time. 
and we can pull these over a bit and pull these over. Now in this case, notice how I'm not changing these two curves uh, here at the tangent level, so I'm maintaining tangency from the curves. You could, of course, uh, get this tangency again by using the project tangent tool over under edit NURBS. In this case, there's really not a reason to do that. So now let's go ahead and we'll select isoparm here, isoparm here, select our two rails, and now if we run the tool, boom, everything takes right off for us. Now in this particular case, we don't really need to keep tangential continuity. I can fix that by grabbing our curves, because you know we already have tangential continuity. But now I can grab control vertices and control vertices, and we can break that. So I can kind of put a little bit of a snap there. So now if we go back over to this guy, we can grab our bi-rail surface node, and we have tangential continuity for profile one. If we switch that on, notice how it keeps that uh, continuity nice and consistent for us. So that's really, uh, that's, that's about it. That's what you can do with this tool. It's just a way to create a nice bi-rail surface using a pair of profile curves as opposed to a single profile curve. Very common tool and very powerful for creating NURB surfaces. That'll wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.